So welcome everyone to this presentation on myofascial release, the pain solution. Again, I will be presenting for the first half of the tonight's presentation on the anatomy and a discussion of the fascia. And then for the second half of tonight's presentation, I'm gonna turn the presentation over to Lisa Burke, who is our Discover Health Movement Membership my self myofascial release instructor, and she's going to be presenting focused on the lumbar spine and how you can do self myofascial release for the lumbar spine. So first of all, this very first slide for our title slide of myofascial release, the pain solution, what you see in the image is a spider web. Now there are so many different analogies related to the fascia. And the fascia is a fabric. I call it the fabric of life. You also can call it the web of life. And so it, folks, connects everything. It connects every single thing in your body to the next thing in your body. It is a three-dimensional system that we'll be talking about in detail tonight. And if you think about it, any kind of fabric has threads. So you're looking at the threads of a, of a web, a network. The other thing I'll point out about the spider web you're looking at is the fact that you see water droplets on all of the different fibers of the thread. This is gonna be really important to understanding how to keep your fascial system, your connective sy system, your connective tissue system ultimately healthy. Now, the other thing I want to emphasize with this portion of the presentation and right off the bat folks, is that your myofascial system is the master designer of our structure. You see, when we are in utero, and we are just an egg, and then we get fertilized and we start to develop as the fetus, we start out developing three primary layers. What, what they're called the endoderm, the mesoderm, and the ectoderm. And different parts of us come about from these different layers of the developing fetus. And what I want you to understand is that when we develop what are called limb buds, meaning when we start to develop our extremities, the first thing that buds off the torso, if you will, or the egg itself or the developing fetus is called a limb bud. And that comes from the mesoderm. The mesoderm is the middle layer that develops, guess what? Your connective tissue system, your fascia. And so this limb bud, if you will, becomes the master designer and it becomes the bag or the fabric upon which all of our parts start to develop into the master designing limb bud. So the bones, the, the, or the muscles, the nerves, the blood vessels follow the fascia and start to fill in the bag. So the web of life is the fascia. Now, myofascial release is the technique that I have been doing my entire career. And it's when a pro medical provider or a you know, health provider lays their hands on your connective tissue, on your body, and evaluates it for symmetry, for balance, for restrictive tissue versus tight tissue versus loose tissue. And so myofascial release is a system of diagnosis and treatment that was first described by Andrew Taylor Still, who was the founder of osteopathic medicine which is the type of provider I am, an osteopathic medical doctor. Now, when using myofascial release as a treatment modality, a medical provider engages continual palpatory feedback to achieve release of the myofascial restrictions. 
So again, we lay our hands and we, we evaluate the tissues. And the tissues may have a direction of ease and can have a direction of restriction, like where the knots and the tightness is, the tissue doesn't want to move as easily. And so I, as the provider, or whoever you tend to go to, if they know how to do myofascial release, you can do either direct myofascial release or indirect myofascial release, where you engage the tissue and you either go into the most restricted area or into the knots and into the tension and engage a, tens a tension into the tissue and the tissue's alive. So it's gonna respond to that and try and unwind. You can also do myofascial release in an indirect technique where you take the tissues away from the restrictive barrier more in the direction of ease. And the same thing in the end outcome should apply in the essence of unwinding restrictions and bringing balance back into the, into the fabric, back into the bag, back into the master designer of the body. Now I have been studying fascia and connective tissue my entire career. And I, so that's over 20 years. And I know it is the main answer to people's pain. Meaning I've studied the bones and I've studied the joints, but if you really wanna move those bones and you wanna move those joints and you wanna bring balance into the structure and you wanna optimize blood flow and you wanna optimize neurological communication and decrease someone's pain, the answer folks is in the fascia. But most people don't know this. And the least, what I will also tell you is that the fascial system is the least studied system of the body. The very first international uh, conference or Congress, they called it, where all the scientists of the, of the world that study the fascia came together to share with each other what we know. How long ago do you think that happened? It happened in 2007. Folks, that's only 13 years ago. So the fascial system is a very young system as far as us understanding it. Now, you can come to someone like me and I can do myofascial release for you and you can pay me the bucks it takes to do that for sure. And sometimes you're always going to need a provider because you can't do everything for yourself. But I will tell you that the second half of tonight's presentation is so important because Lisa is going to show you that you can have this tool in your own toolbox and you can learn how to do self myofascial release. So again, I'm gonna get into some more discussion of the anatomy of the fascia and share, and I, at the end of my presentation, I'm gonna share a video with you by Tom Myers. Tom Myers is a, uh, a rolfer, or now they call themselves structural integrators. He's a very famous one. He's written a book by the name of Anatomy Trains. He's been instructing in uh, structural integration and teaching about the fascia for over 30 years. And he has a Google talk, obviously perfectly free and available to anyone on Google. You can go to YouTube and you can search Tom Meyer's Google talk on fascia, but also we're gonna put it in the chat box for you. So if you wanna listen to his entire presentation after tonight's done, you can go to that link and watch his entire talk. But I am at the end of my presentation tonight gonna to share about a three minute clip with you of a video he shares on that talk that shows you some actual true fascial anatomy. And then when I'm done, I'm gonna turn the presentation, as I said, over to Lisa, and she's gonna present you with some self myofascial release for the lumbar spine. But before I keep going, let me just now introduce Lisa and give you some of her background so you have a sense of who's gonna be presenting for the second half of tonight. So when I'm done, we can just kind of slide transition right in to having Lisa present. So let me read Lisa's bio. Lisa Burke, who is a rad mobility and recovery specialist and a registered yoga teacher, grew up in South Florida and was a children's dance teacher before becoming a flight attendant. 
She's lived in New York, California, and finally, to our uh, luck, has landed in New Hampshire. Lisa has been studying the human body and how we move for more than 25 years. She completed her 200 hour yoga teacher training at Dragonfly Yoga Barn in 2015 and is currently pursuing her yoga medicine therapeutic specialist certification with Tiffany Cruikshank. Through this program, she was introduced to myofascial release and completed her initial 55 hours of myofascial release training. Completing this training and incorporating these techniques into her yoga classes inspired her to obtain her mobility and recovery specialist certification with RAD. Other certifications and training include more than 40 hours of anatomy and physiology training through the South Bay Massage College, Bernie Clark's Yin teacher training, and Pilates MAT certification. Lisa is excited to share her self myofascial release techniques uh, to help you increase mobility, help with pain management, and enhance recovery uh, from injury. Now, your body has three holistic systems that go into every nook and cranny of your body. And if you were able to isolate each of these systems and display these three dimensional systems, they would look just like the body part that it was, or the body it was taken from. Now you're seeing an image of an orange or a grapefruit and you're seeing all the white stuff under the skin. That's fascia folks. And as you see the, the white fabric gets thinner and separates the orange into its sections. So like when you peel the orange and your friend or your, somebody asks you, can I have a section of your orange? And you're able to peel it apart and say, yeah, here, here's a section of my orange. That's fascia that sections off those pieces. If you also look closely at this image, you will see that the pulp is contained in little smaller bags, little tiny bags within each section of the orange. And then down the middle of the orange in the center, you see more fascia surrounding, if you will, the spine of the orange in the center. So folks, this is an orange is a wonderful example of the fascial system being a holistic system. Now the three holistic systems in the human body consist of the nervous system. And the nervous system is an intricate network of nerves and cells that convey messages in the form of electrochemical impulses between parts of the body. It is what coordinates everyday activities, such as walking, eating, and dancing. And it regulates body processes, such as breathing and digestion. Now the existence of the nervous system was conceived and demonstrated a long time ago in the third century BC. So that's the first holistic system of the body. The second holistic system of the body is your vascular system. The vascular system consists of veins and arteries that transport blood to and from every single nook and cranny of your body delivering oxygen and nutrients, and removing harmful waste matter such as carbon dioxide. The function of the heart and, the, and circulation of blood was discovered and first accurately published in the 16th century. Yes, I did say the 16th century, so hundreds of years ago. Now the third holistic system of the body is the fascial system. And the fascia is the connective tissue, the fabric of life, surrounds every single blood vessel, every organ, every muscle, and every nerve. So it encompasses even the first two holistic systems that we've just gone over. Now, just like any fabric, the fascia has threads that run through it, and therefore it looks like a matrix, or as we saw in our first image tonight in the introduction, a spider web particularly on a microscopic level. 
The fascia is alive and the tendrils or threads of the fascial fabric move if they are well hydrated. If they're dried up or become dehydrated from lack of movement, then the fabric of life that surrounds everything in your body will start to restrict blood flow, affect your neurological ability to communicate, and your organs won't work because well because the fabric of the bag they're contained in is too tight. So let's get into the, to what the anatomy of the fascia really is. And the big thing to realize is that we have layers of fascia and these different layers are, should be well hydrated again and they should slide on each other and the tissue needs to be lubricated well. But as you see on this slide here, this, there's different layers and the superficial fascia, that's the first type. You see, and it lays, it lies directly under the dermis of the skin. This fascia also is very fatty. It stores fat and, and water and creates passages for nerves and vessels. So, you know, when you pinch your, your belly, if you will, and you pinch the skin and you feel, uh, you know, you can pinch an inch or whatever you can pinch, that is the skin and the superficial fascia below it that has the adipose or fatty cells and tissue in it. This is also called the hypodermis and is, it is made of very loose connective tissue. Deeper than that is the deep fascia. The deep fascia is formed by a connective membrane that sheaths the muscles like saran wrap. It aids in muscle movement Again, provides passageways for nerves and blood vessels. It provides muscle attachment sites and cushions muscle layers. This fascial layer is made of dense connective tissue. And another type of fascia is called the sub serous fascia. The sub serous fascia separates the deep fascia from the membranes that line the cavities of our body the thoracic and abdominal cavities of the body, for example. The loose connection between these layers allows for flexibility and movement of the internal organs. And this is also a dense connective tissue. So let's get into the detail now and look a little bit more microscopically at the fascia and the cells of the connective tissue. So first of all, the most important cell of the connective tissue is called the fibroblast. And you can see it named there and you see a black line going out to point at one of the purple circles in this web. And those purple circles are cells and they're fibroblast cells. And these are the least specialized of all the cells. They are mainly responsible for secreting the non-rigid cellular matrix of the fascia, including the fibers of collagen. So if you look at the slide again, you'll see pink, dark pink or red thick tubules running through the slide in the web. And there are the collagen fibers. So, and the, the, the thinner parts of the web that are dark purple are elastin fibers. And the fibroblasts are what put out the material to create these different fibers of the web of life. What you don't see in this image are the adipocytes, which are fat storing cells. You also don't see in this diagram macrophages, mast cells, and plasma cells. These are all cells that are in the connective tissue that are parts of your immune system cells. So your immune system is in your connective tissue system. But beyond all of that, what you've got to understand about the fascia is that there is what's called a ground substance. And the ground substance of, the, of what's called the extracellular matrix is a amorphous gelatinous material. So it's gel-like, it's transparent, it's colorless, and it fills the spaces between all the fibers and cells. 
So again, if you look back at the diagram, you'll see all the light pink spaces between the webbing and between the threads of the fabric. Folks, that's all gelatinous ground substance. And this gelatinous gel-like ground substance consists of large molecules called glycosaminoglycans. Don't try and say that 10 times fast, but they're, again, that's glycosaminoglycans, which link together to form very large molecules that are even bigger than them called proteoglycans. But the point of this all is that, folks, the ground substance absorbs water like a sponge, such that 90% of the extracellular matrix is made up of water. So the fascia is sponge-like, and we're going to talk like that a little more, but it's also, again, a fabric. And the point of this slide is to emphasize that the fascial system is truly the fabric of life and made up of its threads, the tendrils of life. So if you see in this image, you have a muscle, and then you have muscle fibers, and, it, and you have blood vessels running between the muscle fibers. But the point of this slide is that everything, no matter how small the tissue is, is surrounded by, guess what? The fabric of life, fascia. So here, let's talk about the consistency of fascia. In this slide, you see on the left, an actual sponge that's taken from the ocean. Sponges are natural things and they're living organisms in the, in the ocean. You can go down and find them. And you're looking at a sponge from the ocean on the left. But of course, it's sitting out on a counter and it's been dried up. So you see what it looks like in the consistency of a real actual sponge. On the right, you are seeing an image of fascial tissue that has been magnified so that you can see the consistency of it looking very much like the consistency of the sponge. So folks, what happens when you leave a sponge out on the counter overnight and you go to pick it up the next morning? It's stiff, it's tight, it won't bend, it's not flexible, it's not pliable, it's brittle, it might break or tear. And we are just like that. So the fascia must be hydrated and moved. And the other thing is, when you put a sponge in water, what will it do? It will start to suck up that water. The ground substance of your fascia will do the same, because remember, it can, is 90% water. And the more you squish the sponge and the more you squeeze the sponge and then put it back in the water, what will it do? It will suck up even more water. So if you want to hydrate your tissues, if you want to decrease your pain, if you want to age well, if you want your organs and your nervous system and your blood vessels to be able to communicate and transport blood to all over your body, you must enhance the health of your fascial system. So now I'm going to share this video uh, by Tom Myers. Again, this is by Tom Myers. This is not mine. This is from uh, YouTube. It, it's only an excerpt from about a 45 minute talk. But we're gonna watch about a two and a half to three minute portion of it. I'm gonna show the video. You will be able to see the images, but it doesn't work well um, on Zoom, uh, the way we're doing the presentation of the webinar for you to hear Tom's voice well. So what I'm gonna do is turn the, the sound down because I know you won't be able to hear it, and I'm going to um, explain to you what you're looking at. But of course, we're putting in the chat box the link to Tom Meyer's entire talk. And um, by all means, follow that link. We will also put the link tomorrow in our Discover Health Facebook group for anyone who's a member of our Discover Health Facebook group. And if you're not already a member, then just go to Facebook, go to our Discover Health Functional Medicine Center Facebook page and just request to become a member of our group. So let's show you this because this is an amazing video. 
So first of all, you are looking at a dissection of the fascial system in an untreated cadaver. This was done by an anatomist by the name of Andreas Palat, who is a Spanish anatomist. So you're seeing there that he's put it, he was putting his hand under the scapula of the tissue. He's also showing what it really looks like under the skin. Because we don't typically get to see that. Now, just like the skeleton of the orange, which we talked about earlier, the fascial system is the stuff that surrounds and compartmentalizes everything in your body. And he's saying now, and he's talking about the uh, fascial, different types of fascia. On the left, you see the endomecium. It's a honeycomb-like structure around every single muscle cell. Then the perimecium in the middle is the lubricating fibers inside the muscles around every single muscle fiber. And then down on the right is the epimecium, which is the ribbon candy or saran wrap looking fabric that surrounds the muscles and forms all the tendons of the body. The fascial system is a great big unitary net that goes all over your body and is the web of life. It doesn't just hold your muscles. The fascia is around every single bone and, it, and in the cartilage and around every single organ. What he's showing you now is the French surgeon at the end of the 19th century took the muscles out and you see the fascial planes of the leg and the foot. Here you see the thigh taking the muscles out of the inner leg and looking at the fascial sheets that are left. But there is new technology We've never seen the fascial system all by itself. So here you're seeing the thigh and you're seeing the fascial system surrounding the muscles and they've taken the skin and the fat away. So you're looking at what's called the fascia profundus. And this fascia profundus squeezes in on the muscles. But folks, in 500 years of anatomy, we have never been able to isolate the fascial system in the way you see right now in this video. The muscles have been taken away and you see that the fascia is all that's left. And this is brand new technology that is just being started and possible. So I hope you enjoyed that. Um, I find it absolutely amazing. As I say, I've been studying the fascia for my entire career. And this amazing system that we are just starting to really have enough people and particularly anatomists and scientists and technology and companies like Google spend money and get involved in so we can understand the fascial system more. But folks, it is your web of life. It's your fabric of life. It encases everything in your body. So at this point, I'm gonna turn this over to uh, Lisa and have her come on. And Lisa, you can go ahead and unmute yourself. Uh, let me unmute you. you. Maybe you can't. Let's see. I'm hitting it. OK, I hear I am. Yeah, it was telling me um, I you had to do it for me, but that's good. Hello, everybody. So Dr. Murray has left this slide up just because I, I just like the picture of how the fascia looks when it's hydrated and organized. It has this nice pattern to it. Everything, you know, is straight and you can tell it'd be easy to move around. And then when we become immobile and we get those fascial adhesions and the lack of hydration, it gets disorganized and dry and looks all tangled, like a tangled mess of, it reminds me of like a you know, you take the hair out of your comb all tangled up and, you know, hard to move it around. So I just like that um, little slide as a visual, a visual for what the fascia should look like and what it can look like when we stop moving. So um, from there, I'll just talk a little bit about a little deeper, because um, looking at the fascia, 
and um, its role in pain. So uh, the fascia has six times as many nerve endings as any other system in the body except for the skin. So you can see how it responds to movement and touch and um, as well as lack of movement and touch. <laughs> so um, well, I wanna talk a little bit about uh, some of those nerve endings, the neurons, nociceptors that um, alert us to the potential to potentially damaging stimuli. So studies are showing that there are three times as many nociceptive neurons in the lumbar fascia than in the spinal muscles. So um, I think so many people deal with low back pain. Sometimes it's very specific to um, an injury or something that has gone on in the body that causes this pain, but sometimes it's a little less specific. Uh, I also, from personal experience, sometimes we get a diagnosis of something and we carry it with us over the years. And I think it's important sometimes, unless you're actively being treated by your physician, if you've had an injury that you started to immobilize yourself in some way, I'm speaking from experience because I've done this, and we don't give our bodies a chance to kind of test it out again in a very safe way. Um, it just becomes more immobile, right? It gets that dried out, gets all gnarled like we looked at in that picture. So um, we're going to look at um, those fascial connections from the lumbar fascia and working kind of outside in. So not necessarily working on right in the lumbar area, but the muscles that have those fascial connections right through the lumbar fascia. So just a couple interesting statistics, at least I found them interesting. So people with low back pain tend to have 25% thicker connective tissue in the low back, which tends to lead to a 20% less shear strain or less slide and glide. So I know if you are a participant in my class, I talk about slide and glide a lot. Dr. Murray's mentioned it. Um, and that has to do with the ground stuff substance, the glycosaminoglycans, like hyaluronic acid, <clears throat> excuse me. Lack of use, lack of movement causes a 40% loss of hyaluronic acid, which leads to reduce ability of slide and glide of those tissues. So, with that being said, we're gonna look at the lumbar fascia, but it's connections with the muscles that are around it. So um, the technique we're going to be using this evening is a shearing technique. <clears throat> so what we're trying to get at is movement between the fascial layers. So um, in a very basic level, uh, if you just take your hand and place it on top of your arm and you make that connection to your skin, in turn, having a connection to that superficial layer of fascia. And if you move your fingers, but with that skin connected, now we're kind of shearing or scrubbing the superficial and deep layer of fascia. So we can twist it, we can just slide it back and forth. So we're not moving the hand across the arm, we're making the connection and getting those two layers to, to shear against each other, right? So um, this technique is very hydrating to the system. So we're gonna look at right now um, the more superficial layer of muscles and their connection to the lumbar fascia. Um, I'm gonna show you a little picture. We're gonna look at the latissimus dorsi and the gluteus maximus. So uh, my husband was kind enough to draw a picture so we didn't have copyright issues. Uh, I find it's really beneficial to actually visualize where these muscles are. Most of us know where our glute max is, right? It's, you know, what we sit on every day. <laughs> but the latissimus dorsi are these muscles here. So um, on the back, kind of wrapping to the sides, it actually uh, connects 
at the humerus on our arm bone. So if you're familiar with, you know, if you've been to a gym, lat pull, down, pull downs, that pulling motion, that's that muscle here on our back that, um, that is responsible for that. Uh, so I just wanted you to have a visual of where we're going. I think that's very helpful. So the darker um, area represents the muscles, the, the latissimus dorsi, and then these are the gluteus maximus. And you can look at this lighter area as that lumbar fascia. And the way the um, fascial planes are connected, um, it's across each other. So like if you take your right glute, those fascial lines go up towards your left lat and vice versa, left glute to right lat. So just a, a little visual, I like to help you see that. Hopefully that's helpful to you. So um, if you want to join along with the um, movement portion of the, the webinar, please feel free to grab your mat and join us. If not, you can watch and this will be available on video. And if you come to class on Tuesday, I will build on this in our next Tuesday's class. So if you have um, a blanket that you can roll up or if you have a foam roller, that will work great as well. But if you don't have a foam roller, feel free to grab a blanket or a towel and just make a nice tight little roll with it. Or if you happen to have a small bolster, something like that would work as well, okay? So we'll come on to our backs. And if you're not able to get on the floor, you can do this work against a wall. Um, probably the wall would be better. You could sit in a chair as well, but I think the wall might be better for that. So for now, just come onto your back and just pause for a moment and settle in however you're comfortable. I like to have my knees bent with my feet flat on the floor. That's just the most comfortable position for me. You can have your legs extended if you want, however you're comfortable. So just land here and notice how you land. Notice how your spine is on the floor, starting from your sacrum, from your glute area. So, you know, you might notice if your pelvis is tilted way up and you have no lumbar curve behind you, or you might notice that you're really hyperextended there. Just observe where you are, just with your eyes closed, just kind of have a sense of where you are and how you've landed in your body. Then I'll ask you to just take a nice deep breath in through the nose, sigh out through the mouth, and just let go of any tension. Maybe give the body a little wiggle to settle in. And just for a moment, observe the breath coming in and going out, and just notice the quality of your breath. And start to notice what happens in the body as you sort of settle in, start to become very aware of your breathing, maybe that sense of relaxation a little bit. Also, Notice any sensations that you might have, specifically, specifically in that low back area in the lumbar spine, maybe out into the glutes, maybe a little higher up in the back. Just starting to sort of get quiet and notice what is happening in the body. Letting go of any tensions that you find. So with our myofascial release practice, we really want to coax the body into relaxing and releasing, so we don't want to create any tension. We also don't want to feel anything sharp, shooting, stabbing. We don't want to feel any tingling or numbness. So I'm going to grab my blanket and you can grab your um, blanket, or if you have a foam roller, I'm going to lift my hips up and I'm going to place this underneath my sacrum. So the sacrum is that flat bone, and you can kind of judge it by you know where your glutes are, right? It's coming right underneath that gluteus maximus area, getting into glute need a little bit. But the important thing is to make sure you have a space in your lumbar spine. So we don't wanna be so far back that you're kind of falling off of it and you can't get your hand under there, but you also don't wanna be rolled over it so that it's in your lumbar spine, right? Does that make sense? We wanna lift those hips up. And you should, you should feel really secure and comfortable there. And you'll know for sure if you are, because I'm going to ask you to float your knees above your hips, just that 90 degree angle there from at the hips and knees. So again, check in, make sure you feel really stable. So if you feel wobbly one way or another, go ahead and make a little adjustment. 
and just pause here. And just notice how that changes things. So now we've lifted up, we've added a little bit more of our weight into that gluteal tissue. And that's already starting to give us a little bit of compression there, which is also very beneficial for hydrating those tissues. So if you look at, if you consider your knees being at the 12 o'clock mark, we're gonna rock our knees over to the one o'clock mark. So this will take us a little more into that glute of the right side. And we're gonna to start to make tiny little circles with those knees, kind of creating that shearing motion like I described, right? Like we're getting those layers to slide and glide along each other, really creating some great hydration in there. And just make sure you're breathing as you move, just little tiny circles. You can go in both directions if you want. And then we'll pause and find stillness there for just a moment. Just take a breath in and out. And then we'll exhale and draw those knees back to that 12 o'clock point. And just pause for a moment and breathe. If you need to take a rest and put your legs down, that's okay too. You can come back and join us. So now we're gonna take the knees over to the 11 o'clock position. We're gonna bring this neutral is 12. So we're gonna rock over to 11. You know, maybe it's 1030. Don't worry so much about exactly precise, but don't feel like your knees are gonna fall all the way over. So just land there for a moment, get still. Just notice, you know, the shifting of the pressure into that left side. Make sure you're breathing and you're not holding your breath. And we'll start making those little circles over here. So just make sure you breathe as you move. Just, just nice, gentle little circles. And you can go in both directions if you like. And we'll go ahead and find some stillness. Pause there for a breath. And we'll exhale and draw those knees back up to that 12 o'clock position. And then we're gonna, one more time, we're gonna go over to that one o'clock position. And then we're going to imagine like we're walking. So we're just gonna let the knees kind of pop back and forth like you're taking a little walk. Just moving in a little different plane there outside of the circling. And then we'll come and be still there for just a moment, taking a breath or two. And then we'll exhale our way back to that neutral at 12 o'clock position. Let's pause and breathe. You might notice a difference in sensation side to side, just really being in tune with our bodies, what's happening as we move through this process. We'll go ahead and exhale, drop the knees over to that 11 o'clock marker. And we'll again, take a little walk there. <clears throat> so just, just a little, you don't have to take giant strides. We're not trying to work out the abdominal muscles or anything. We're just getting at that shearing motion between those fascia layers. And then we'll come to stillness once more. Take a breath there, settling in. And we'll exhale, take those knees back to that 12 o'clock position. Go ahead and release the feet to the floor. We'll lift the hips, remove your foam roller or your blanket, whatever you were using, and just land again and pause and notice. So maybe you notice how you're connected to the earth. Maybe you feel a little bit longer. Maybe you just have that sense of kind of fluid hydration, kind of that juiciness of that hydration that just occurred in the tissue. That's always sensation that I love to feel through myofascial release. So it might feel like a warmth or a coolness or just kind of difference in um, temperature sensation there. And if you want, you could give your knees a little hug in, or you can take a little rock gentle twist side to side if that is helpful for you to just kind of feel what's going on in there. It's whatever is beneficial to you, or it's okay to just be still and just enjoy the sense of the sensation that you feel and just notice 
what you notice. <clears throat> so from here, we're going to take that bowl or foam roller up into our back area for that um, the lats there. And so it's right here, pretty much at that mid back. So at the bottom of the shoulder blades above the lumbar spine. So getting at that lower thoracic spine there, if you can see kind of right across here is where we'll get, we'll get that um, blanket roll. So when you come down there, that might make the floor kind of far away for your head. So feel free to grab another prop, either another blanket, or if you have one of these bolsters or even a, um, a block would be helpful as well. So we'll get down there and land. You can rest your head comfortably. And just take a moment to settle there and make sure you're comfortable. So again, remember if it's too low, you might have too much of an arch. Like for me, if it's too low, it's very uncomfortable in my low back. Because as I started to tell you before, I have had in the past and I still kind of work around some low back issues that I have. But I have found that the myofascial release is very important and very helpful. But as well, you want to work on some strengthening of those muscles as well. So getting yourself comfortable in that lat area there. And just settle in again for a moment and breathe. So make sure you're comfortable. Make sure you didn't create any discomfort, especially in that lumbar spine, because we're trying to actually release tension in the lumbar spine by working distally outside of that actual lumbar area specifically. So again, notice what you notice. You start to feel the compression of your foam roller or your blanket roll. Notice how, you know, and that in itself is a good kind of, almost can look at it as like squeezing out that sponge, right? So that when we release from it, it can draw in more fluid. So I'm going to take my head in my hands to hold my head up so that I can get some movement here. And I'm just going to kind of scrub side to side. It's almost like drawing my right elbow towards my right hip or my left elbow towards my left hip back and forth side to side. Just gentle. It doesn't have to be a big motion. Be very small and gentle. So making sure not to create any discomfort. And again, my lumbar spine is completely still. I'm just getting that movement up in my thoracic area. Making sure you're breathing. Just relaxing the head and neck as much as possible. Just let those arms fly open. You can stop over to our right side a little bit. You can kind of just kind of make little tiny circles there, or just half little scrubbing side to side more into that right side lat there. And then I'm going to sweep over to my left side and pause there for a moment. And again, I'll get a little smaller little scrub there or sort of a circular motion. Remember, you can pause and just relax completely if you need to. And then we'll come back to center, find stillness. Go ahead and release the head back to your blanket or block. And just settle there for a moment and breathe. Let the compression take place there. And we'll take one more little action there. So if you want to just gently rock to your right, you might take your left arm across your body for a little bit more um, leverage towards your right. So we're not laying completely on our side. Maybe the body's at about a 45 degree angle. So again, that same thing, just to get a little more to those outside fibers. And from there, if you want to move your arm up and down, we'll cause the muscle to move. And again, creating that shearing effect. We're going to stay mindful and connecting with the breath, letting your breath be your guide. And then if you're moving that arm, go ahead and find stillness. And then we'll exhale and roll back 
onto our back. We'll just pause there for a moment. Maybe you notice a difference side to side. Maybe you don't. It's okay. No right or wrong. Just really observing just to, so we notice if there are any differences. And then we'll exhale and we'll do that same thing over to the left. So we'll drop to the left. Let your right arm drape across the body. So maybe just at that 45 degree angle. Get a little more of that outside outer fibers there. And again, if you want to take that swiping up and down of the arm, just nice and gentle. It can stay against the floor. It doesn't have to be lifted up. And just connecting to the breath. And then we'll go ahead and find some stillness there. And we'll exhale and roll back onto our back. And again, just pause for one moment. And we'll go ahead and release from there. So gently either roll yourself to one side or prop yourself up on one elbow. Move your props out of the way. If you want to keep the prop that's under your head, feel free. I'm going to move mine. It's nice to be on the floor for me. And again, Landing here, however, is comfortable. You can keep the knees bent, construct a rest. You can straighten the legs if that's comfortable for you. And again, just observe, just notice the senses of sensation in the area that we just worked in that mid back. You give your knees another little hug in, maybe a rock side to side. If you'd like to take a gentle little twist, only if that's okay for your body. It might give you an indication of maybe things free up a little bit more. And then I invite you to just stay there on your back, relaxing for a little bit longer. Or you can sit up and might notice just senses of sensation in the back as you're sitting up nice and tall. So whether you're lying down or sitting Sitting up, go ahead and just close your eyes for a moment. And just notice how you've landed. Notice where your pelvis is. If it's rocked forward or back, if it's a little more neutral. If you have a sense of release in that low back, even though we didn't work right on it, right? We worked through that fascial plane that connects right through that lumbar fascia. And then, so this is just one layer of muscle that that lumbar fascia goes through. So um, the second layer looks deeper into the erector spinae muscle. So those muscles that run up and down the sides of our spine, getting out into um, our sits bones, the ischial tuberosities, we call the sits bones and those attachments to the hamstrings. And also the deep abdominal muscles are connected to that lumbar fascia. So you can see this is, we just touched on it very lightly this evening. Hopefully you had some sense of relief or just maybe it might just be a slight little noticing difference in how you feel. For me, a lot of times the biggest difference or sense of sensation that I have is just that feeling of fluidness and hydration and just juiciness of the, of the tissues that I've worked. So um, again, as I started to talk about a little bit when we got on the ground, so not just the stretching, but also strengthening. So very good idea to also join Discover Movements yoga class and Movement for Longevity, all very important modalities, all three, to keep the tissues hydrated, sliding and gliding, taking that nice relaxation of the self-myofascial release, but working our bodies a little bit in those other classes as well, just to also have some strength there because it's a balance of strength and flexibility that really helps keeping our tissues and our bodies moving fluidly and carrying us through life and being able to recover when we do have setbacks of little injuries and um, things that come up for us. So I hope you found that small presentation interesting and helpful. And like I said, this coming Tuesday's class, I'm going to build from there. So connecting those three layers that are connected to the lumbar fascia, because even if this didn't necessarily give you any real sense of relief in the lumbar spine, you know, it might be another muscle that's connected there that might be 
partially contributing to what might be going on if you have that low back pain. So I'll turn it back over to Dr. Murray and thank you very much for well, doing Lisa, thank you for that. That was awesome. My body feels loosey goosey and uh, tingly actually after I was done with that. Excellent. I do want to share a couple of uh, last slides um, to just sum up tonight. So let me see if I can do that. And slide show from current slide. So um, folks, if you've enjoyed tonight and you would like to learn more about the fascia and the anatomy of the fascia, uh, my latest book entitled No More Band-Aids 2.0, Finding Answers in a Broken Medical System, is in this book, this is a collaborative book of actually seven different authors in the functional medicine world. And my chapter in this book is called The Missing Link to Healthy Aging. It's about the fascial anatomy. I also challenge you to a 21 day challenge and I give you exercises to do. I talk about diet and I talk about hydration in order to optimize your fascial system. At the end of that 21 day challenge, if you have found benefit, the next step would be as Lisa brought up to absolutely join our Discover Health Movement membership. And to get to that, or after tonight, if you're like, wow, I want to be at Lisa's class on Tuesday, uh, because she is going to give you much more. She presented and demonstrated in the way she teaches during her self-myofascial release class. And the other webinars we've done over the last two months has been by the other instructors, Jim Chaput, who is our Movement for Longevity uh, teacher, and his focus is on balance and strength, and Megan Vessel, who is our Discover Yoga instructor. Um, so if you want to learn more, and you, you really should sign up, because I'm telling you, if you really want to improve your health, if you want to age with grace, if you want to optimize the function of all the systems of your body, go to discoverhealthfmc.com forward slash hashtag movement that you see on this final slide. So thank you so much for joining us tonight, everyone.